Ever since the preview for Riders Republic, I knew it was going to be a fun experience. A massive open world playground with a blend of many different disciplines, the different sports, that doesn't take itself too seriously, puts fun first and lets you decide how and what you want to progress. Riders Republic starts with a multi-sport race at the very beginning that serves as a teaser as to what to expect from the game. It's high octane, fast, frantic and once you've configured your controls, you're shown to the hub area, Riders Ridge. You'll meet two very enthusiastic characters that will be your guides for the rest of the game. They are a little bit cringy, to be honest. It reminds me of the how do you do fellow kids meme and they'll show you around the ridge and how to participate in all of the events, how to buy a new outfits and learn the new tricks and then immediately after that the world is your oyster and you're free to do as you please. The one persistent goal while you're out doing events in the world is always to get more stars. This is your main form of progression and it doesn't really change which I was fine with. More events unlock at certain star thresholds and it goes all the way to about 7000 being the last milestone in that progression. It's very simple to understand and gives you something to work to. Towards. I love how you can choose what sport and career you want to go down and focus on. I personally prefer the bike and the rocket suit events because the sprint and boost meter that gives you a burst of speed, it just gives you a feeling of more control. It feels a bit more interactive as opposed to some of the snow events on skis and snowboards where it kind of feels like you're just sliding down a hill. One of my biggest concerns when I first started playing was replayability. How many times can I barrel down a hill and not get bored? I'm pleased to say that that wasn't the case because of the event challenges. Challenges will reward stars for completion. The harder the challenge, the more stars it will give. They are free per event and I don't know what it is about collecting stars but it was a big driving force for me and it had me replaying the same events up to 10 times just to land a certain trick challenge or beat a certain time or place first and when I did, it was instant gratification that made me want to continue continue and collect even more. So in a sea of so many events to do, even just one goes a long way. It helps that the tracks and the massive open world you're racing through are fantastic. The views and environments are very detailed, rarely the same and at times feels like you're solving a puzzle trying to get through them more so than completing a race. The different biomes work well to keep things fresh, forest, snow and desert and a mixture of them all, it feels like you're in a playground and it's a rush to wingsuit glide through a narrow canyon at 100 miles per hour and then seeing an AI just canoeing below you or when it's a multi-sport race, zooming down a steep hill, hitting a ramp and deploying a rocket propelled wingsuit and then flying over a dense forest, weaving in between trees and then converting back to a snowboard. These are the moments that make the game fun and give it balance. It's real enough how you feel the difference in terrain when you rear off the track and feel the gravity when you're trying to climb a steep hill, but fantasy enough to let you fly hundreds of feet into the air, do a 1080 spin, spin the handlebars, tail whip, triple backflip, go make a T, come back and land as if gravity doesn't exist. A balance of fun and control is a plus in my books. There are other factors that influence those controls though. Of course, your gear. When you're out completing events and getting those sweet, sweet stars, you'll also be unlocking new gear. I'm in two minds about how they handled acquiring new bikes, snowboards, rocket suits and other gear. On one hand, I love how simple it is. All of the gear has a gear score attached to it and usually the higher gear score, the better the gear, right? So I don't think I ever hesitated to press the upgrade button, not even bothering to look at the stats or how it will affect my control. 95% of the time it was me saying, me want bike with big number and that's proved successful up until now. It's simple and I don't have to pay much attention to it and I could focus on just having fun in the events. Now on the other hand, I'm a huge fan of looter style games. Think Destiny 2, Borderlands The Division and part of me wishes there was more gear customization in Riders Republic. Nearly all of Ubisoft's newer games have gone in a direction where gear matters. It's in Far Cry 6, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so part of me thinks they should have lent into gear way harder in Riders Republic. Why don't the gear have perks attached to them? They don't have to be wild, even though wild perks would suit the game's theme, but just imagine a gear set that gave you one perfect landing once a race or forgave you for missing a checkpoint or an ultimate that let you score double points for five seconds. The possibilities are endless. It wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea, but I would have liked to see what that version of Riders Republic would have looked like, or at least just let me change the color of the gear that I already have, you know? Also, as it stands, the outfit options kind of suck all of the good stuff is behind the paywall so I've got all of this in-game currency that I've earned from completing all of these challenges and events that I can't spend because nothing in there really looks nice. 
Touching back on the events, the variety and styles of events are fun. For a more linear experience that tests your speed and reaction time, the standard first to finish races are for you. If you want to flex and get technical, the trick and stunt events are my personal favorite. If you want to have a laugh, the Shack Daddy Bandit events will 100% put a smile on your face with how silly some of the scenarios they put you in can be. Or if you want to do a combination of them all, there are the multi-sport races. There is something for everyone to enjoy here. One of the biggest selling points though is that Riders Republic is massively multiplayer, with one of the biggest events in the game being mass races. Mass races are 64 player multi-part multi-sport events that are great the first few times you do them, not so great after. The awe of it all runs out pretty fast because it's simply too chaotic. 64 players all colliding with each other is simply not fun and there's no level based matchmaking so you could be faced against someone thousands of stars ahead of you with way better and faster gear leaving your only way of winning that race up to chance hoping that you start at the front or the faster riders get barged off the track or mess up by missing a checkpoint and have to waste time backtracking the concept of mass races is amazing it reminds me a lot of the game fall guys but its issues are too prominent for me at the moment i'd rather go off by myself and do challenges or explore the map for collectibles also as it stands at the time of this review it seems the player base is already struggling to populate the other matchmaking events such as the trick battles or free-for-all events which is a shame because they are fun but waiting in a 15 minute queue when I only plan to play the game for 30 minutes or an hour is not cool. Which is sort of a double-edged sword because one of Riders Republic's biggest strengths is how easy it is to pick up and play for 30 minutes or an hour, have fun and feel like you've accomplished something. Should you buy and play Riders Republic? Absolutely. It's incredibly fun with loads of activities and events that keep you busy and can be really challenging if you up the difficulty. If you'd rather chill and just explore the world, there's also a zen mode. It's certain to make you smile and burst out of laughter with how silly it can be at times, make you feel a sense of achievement and satisfaction when completing objectives, and also make you want to throw your controller out of the window when you just can't seem to win a race, no matter how hard you try. It handles great, focuses on all of the right things to capture that extreme sports fantasy. It's easy to pick up and play, and even more enjoyable with friends. I played it both on PC and PS5, and the performance is great. Thanks for watching my review of Riders Republic. This is Durani from VG247. Peace out, everyone.